Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this solemn assembly. We thank you for this blessed moment. We thank you for this time of remembering the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, realizing what it means for us, realizing your grace, your love, your mercy for us. We also thank you that at the same time you are reminding us that we are to do this in remembrance of Christ our Lord and Savior until he comes again. May this celebration be for us a sign, a commemoration, a fellowship, a communion, a reminder of who we are in Christ and what we are supposed to be in Christ and how we are to be the ministers of Christ to the world. May it remind us of God's expectation upon us until the Lord comes again. Be with us as we go through this. That will preserve the solemnity that goes with the occasion. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. As you know, we have come together this time around the table of the Lord so that we can do what he ordained and what he instituted before he led. It is necessary that we will remind ourselves of relevant scripture passages leading on to the Lord's Supper, bringing in the Lord's Supper, and continuing the Lord's Supper of the Church of Christ. As the leading text, we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23. So verse 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take each. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Here we find the revelation concerning the Lord's Supper. And Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles in particular, tells us that he received this of the Lord. And he says that we are expected to do this in remembrance of Christ. And the church is supposed to continue the observance of the Lord's Supper until Christ comes again. For us to fully understand, we will need to see how the Lord's Supper came about and what had been commemorated 
among the people of God, the Israelites, before the institution of the Lord's Supper. And the place Christ takes in what the children of Israel commemorated. And what now brings the change from what Israel used to do to what is done today in the church, which is now the Lord's Supper. For us to cover this ground, we'll need to consider three points. One, the institution of the Passover for Israel. Two, the institution of the Lord's Supper for believers. Three, the celebration of the Lord's Supper in the church. One, the institution of the Passover for Israel. On the day that God signified to the children of Israel that they were to be taken out of Egypt, which was to be their redemption, out of the house of bondage, their freedom and their salvation, to be taken out of the land of affliction, the iron furnace, and to be brought as peculiar people unto the Lord. On that day, God instructed that there should be what is called the Passover. In Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 3, Speak ye unto, the, unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep and from the, or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And it shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And it shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, it shall burn with fire. Thus shall ye eat it. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Against all the gods of Israel will I execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token, a sign, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. 
and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. The book of Exodus talks about redemption. The redemption of the children of Israel in particular. We we'll see all that God did, how he brought a lot of plagues upon Egypt because Pharaoh had questioned and challenged God, saying, Who is that God that I will let the children of Israel go? The last sign, the last wonder, the last plague, the last rod of chastisement to come upon Egypt before the children of Israel will be released came at this time. And God prepared the children of Israel. He said he will pass through the land and the firstborn of every man, of every beast in Egypt will die. But God will pass over the children of Israel as the redeemed people. Then he instructed them that they should take a lamb without blemish. Looking forward to the lamb of God that will come to take the sins of the world away. They will kill it. They will shed the blood. They will put the blood upon the lintels of their houses. In the night when the angel of death passed through the land. As the angel sees the sign of the blood, it will pass over them. Which means they were passing from condemnation unto life. And so it was. But then God instructed that they will eat the flesh of the lamb. Not only that, they will eat it with bitter herbs. As a reminder of the bitter bondage that they had suffered in the land of Egypt. They will eat it in haste. As people believing God that the day of their deliverance had come. And they will be in a haste to get out of the land of captivity. They will eat ready to go out, ready to travel. With their shoes on their feet. Because that night God was going to visit them. But then God then at that same time instituted what is referred to as the Passover. He said, what you have done tonight, eating this with the unleavened bread for the children of Israel and for us today, living typifies sin. And he told them that for seven days later, they will keep the feast of the unleavened bread. Seven is a number for completeness, telling us that the complete life of the believer in Jesus Christ today is to be free from sin. And then he said, you will do this from generation to generation in the land of Israel. They kept this. There is no time to go through Deuteronomy Chapter 16, verses 1 to 6. You see more instruction to the children of Israel as to how they were to keep it. In the time of the Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verses 12 to 22. Again, they kept the Passover. In Second Chronicles, chapter 35, verses 1 through to 19, you will see once again the keeping of the Passover. In Ezra chapter 6, verses 20 to 22, you will see once again the keeping of the Passover. Looking at all these references together, we see that at the time of keeping the Passover, the Levites were supposed to have sanctified themselves, set apart themselves, cleansed themselves, prepared themselves for the service. The singers also had been appointed, if you read all those references, that day to day were to take their place because it was a time of remembering. 
the deliverance and the redemption that God gave to the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And therefore they were to sing, they were to be joyful. Not only that, Christian as well as Jewish historians have told us that the Jewish people, they will sing Psalm 113, 114. Then they will take a part of the Passover. Then they will sing Psalm 115 all through to Psalm 118. And as they sang all these psalms, they were remembering what the Lord had done, commemorating the Passover. It went on until the New Testament time, until Jesus came. And Jesus Christ, because he came to fulfill the law, he said, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. He also partook of the Passover. So we now go to point two, which is the institution of the Lord's Supper for believers. Before that institution, Jesus Christ took the Passover of the children of Israel. In Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 17. Now, the first day of the, fe of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to search a man, and say to him, the master says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as he did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The son of man goeth, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. So Jesus Christ took the Passover with his disciples because his disciples were Israelites and he himself came as son of David as son of Abraham and he came out of the tribe of Judah because of this to fulfill all righteousness and to fulfill the ordinance that God had given to the children of Israel he kept the Passover but it's more he himself was that lamb that Isaiah had referred to. And because he was now about to be betrayed and to be crucified, the lamb that the children of Israel had taken in symbolic form and had killed all these years, the time had come for Jesus Christ to become a fulfillment. And because of that, he took that Passover. But then it was at that very time the Passover ended. And now he instituted the Lord's Supper. If you read a parallel passage in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. If you see it from verse 11 to verse 18, it basically repeats just what we have read about the Passover. But then having concluded the Passover... He now instituted the Lord's Supper in verse 19. Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. 
this do in remembrance of me. The Passover was commemorated in remembrance of coming out of the land of Egypt. But now the Passover had an end. Christ instituted now a new thing. And what the church, what the disciples, what the believers were now to commemorate was not redemption from Israel, from Egypt, or the redemption, the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. It was now to be done in remembrance of Christ, a Passover that is sacrificed for us. He now took bread, the unleavened bread. Unleavened bread because Jesus Christ is pure, without sin. And so the bread without leaven typifies, symbolizes, represents his body. It says, this is my body given for you. There are some people that will say that the bread is the real body of Jesus Christ. But no, in the Greek, the word to be, from which you get is, when you conjugate. You have, this is my body. In the Greek, it simply means, this represents my body. It is like when Jesus told a parable and said, the field is the world. The word is there means the field represents the world. When he gave the parable, the sower is the son of man. The sower in the parable represents the son of man. When Jesus said in John, I am the door. It's simply saying, I represent the door by which anyone believing will come into the kingdom of God. This represents my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup. After supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And at that time, Jesus Christ instituted the Lord's Supper. And he already commanded that this must be done in remembrance of him. So since that time, the believers had been commemorating or celebrating the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This leads us on to the celebration of the Lord's Supper in the church. Point three. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. Paul the Apostle had delivered this ordinance, the Lord's Supper, unto the Corinthian Christians. And now he was assuring them because he was not there when Jesus took the Passover with his disciples and then moved over to the Lord's Supper and commanded the disciples, do this in remembrance of me. Paul the Apostle was not a Christian at that time. He later knew the Lord. But then he said, when I came to know the Lord, this I received of the Lord by direct revelation that Jesus, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, this shows us how to commemorate the Lord's Supper. That is the bread first. And if you look at all those passages I read in Matthew and Luke, it's the bread first. That he took the bread. After he had given thanks, he said, Take, eat. This is my body. This represents my body. Remember, when you go back to the Old Testament, the Passover, they were to eat of that lamb. And the Old Testament, if you have time to read through, the edge of that lamb. And remember that those people had been uh, slaves in the land of Egypt. When we read in the Psalms, it tells us that they all went out. There was not one person weak or sick among them. The eating of the lamb had healed them. And as you come to take the Lord's Supper, you have the benefit of even being healed. Because when you take 
what represents the body of Christ. It does for you more than what the Lamb did for the children of Israel. That anywhere there is sickness or weakness or frailty, anything that ought not to be there, then you find that as you take that body, everything becomes normal. Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Those two words, how beautiful, for you. The Lord's Supper is for you as a child of God. You have placed your faith in Christ. You have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You recognize his death on the cross of Calvary. You recognize that all he suffered, the stripes that were laid upon him, his broken body, for you in particular. He said, this is for you. And therefore you realize as you take this that you are taking what Christ has made for you. He said, this do in remembrance of me. As we come around the table of the Lord, we are to do this to remember him in remembrance of the Lord. Then it says, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, that is, after supper, sup, supper, after he had finished the supper, that he took the cup, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as ought as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. And that is how it will be done tonight. First, the unleavened bread. We take that in remembrance of him, of his body that was broken for us. Then after that, we take the cup, and it is the fruit of the vine, as he commemorated. Time will not permit us to go into all those references, that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine with you until I drink it anew in the kingdom. But that is what we're going to have. It says, when you do it, you are doing it in remembrance of me. Then verse 26. It says, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. That when you take this, it is one, a sign looking back to Calvary. Two, a sign looking forward to glory. One, you do show the Lord's death. You have your mind, go back to Calvary. Were you there when he crucified my Lord? You remember that he was crucified. It's death. Were you there when he laid him in the tomb? You look back to the time he died, to the time he was buried. But you don't stop there. Were you, were you there when he rose from the dead? Now you look at his resurrection. Because he rose up so that we can be justified. You don't even stop there. You look at the time when the trumpet shall sound. And when Christ shall come. And you're looking for him and watching for him to come again. Till he come. So then, as we take this Lord's Supper. It reminds us of what Christ has done. It reminds us of what Christ is still going to do. It's coming again. And so you have the celebration of the Lord's Supper in the church. But then Paul the Apostle, from what he received, he had to tell the Corinthian Christians that they do not come to the table of the Lord carelessly. We do not come to the table of the Lord without knowing the reality of the sacrifice of Christ in our lives and in talking to them he continued in verse 27 wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord the Jews who crucified Christ were guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Christ, was guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Pilate was guilty, even though he said, I am innocent, and he washed his hands. He was guilty. 
and all those people that said crucify him and let his blood be upon us and upon our children they were guilty of the body and of the blood and so paul the apostle said you corinthian believers don't put yourself in the category of judas iscariot of pilate and of those jewish people who became guilty of the blood of the lord therefore we should not come to the table of the lord carelessly or with sin we should remember that when the passover was kept in israel it was to be with unleavened bread and we're told in first corinthians chapter 5 from verse 6 your glory in is not good talking to the corinthians and talking to us too know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb put out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lamb as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but the, with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth so paul the apostle emphasized to the corinthians he said malice should not be in us and all the bickering and the gossiping and the preference of preachers and the carnality and the argument and taking one another to court that he found among the children of Israel all the indecent kind of lives that he found among them should not be among them he said if all those things were there and they were not repented of and he took the Lord's Supper in that condition with carnality, with immorality, with insincerity, with hypocrisy, with all those evil things among them, that they will be guilty of the blood of the Lord and the body of the Lord. But then he encouraged them. He said, I don't mean that you will not take it. But all I'm saying, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, is only let a man examine himself. But let a man examine himself as he comes to take the Lord's Supper. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Not that you will not eat, only examine yourself first. And make sure that the works of the flesh are not there. Make sure that there is no leaven at all, no malice, no hatred, no evil. And praise the Lord, we'll be here all this time. And the Lord has been dealing with us in wonderful ways. And there may be things that we need to settle. Maybe the person you need to settle with is far away. As you examine yourself, the gracious Lord says, I understand. If that person were here, sitting by you, you will just boldly say, Oh, my brother, I need to settle this with you before taking the Lord's Supper. But that person is not here. I understand you are going to do it when you get back home. You are free to go ahead and take the Lord's Supper. I take your decision to do it. I already accept it as if you have done it. Or it may be the person is even here that you ought to settle with. But because it's such a large crowd, during the afternoon, you endeavor to look for the person so that you could settle so that this evening you'll be able to take the Lord's Supper. But as you try to look in this large crowd, you couldn't get the person that you told the Lord, Lord, you know how much I love you and I really want to do what you want me to do. And I don't want any kind of leaven, any kind of malice, any kind of unsettled thing with anybody. In my heart, oh Lord, if I saw that person, I would have settled. And God says, I know my child, your sincerity. I know you really love me and i know you want to live a life that is pleasing unto me void of offense towards god and towards man if you had the opportunity and because of the grace of god trusting you that when you see that person either tomorrow or any other time already you have promised the lord the lord accepts it as if you have done it although you have not had the opportunity of doing it or it may be anything that you know that the lord has been talking to you about and the lord has been saying my child i demand this level of standard from you i demand this kind of standard of living from you 
this is my calling. I have a ministry for you in that place, a ministry for you in that place. See, those people that Jesus died for, they are perishing. And I want you to be there. And you have been saying before this time, that is difficult. And now the Lord says, I want to take my body. And I've been talking about this broken body, broken for you and broken for those people. You want to take the symbol, the emblem of the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. And those people that I shed my blood for, I've been talking to you about it. And say, Lord, I surrender. I've examined myself. I see that you want to use me. You want to glorify yourself through my life. But because of my littleness of faith, because I have not been very, very attentive, I've been saying no. As I come to this solemn moment, and I realize the gravity of what you did for me and what you did for them. I'm sorry that I was slow in the past to understand, but now I give up. I'm going to do what you want me to do. As we examine ourselves, and we bring ourselves in line with the word of God, and there's no argument with God. There's no rebellion against God. Anything that was wrong, we set right as we examine ourselves. Then he says, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And as you drink in that condition, you eat in that condition, in a condition of grace, of depending upon the Lord, relying upon the Lord, examining yourself and whatever the spirit of god points out saying oh lord thy will be done in my life go ahead and take the lord's supper it will be a blessing to your soul to your spirit and to your body and you'll never be the same again we'll spend some few minutes if possible on our knees if there's any place for you there to be on your knees otherwise you'll be standing up examining yourself quietly Saint Spirit of the Living God, search me, examine me. Any old leaven within me, anything that is not pleasing to you, I want to be a pleasing child, an obedient child. I'm sorry if I've rebelled in any way in the past. Now, not my will, thine be done. Let a man examine himself. Let a woman examine herself. Yes, you will take it. It's for you. His body was broken for you. This is yours. This is your Lord's table. And nothing should push you away from it. But let a man examine himself.